18, Gulf County Board of County Commissioners now in session. Will you please join me in, in prayer? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for who you are to us, Lord. We, th we thank you for the wonderful people of Gulf County. We thank you for this great, this great nation. We continue to pray for all our leaders uh, in the United States of America. Father, we pray for our, our local leaders. Be with us this morning. Be with this board. Be with our families, Lord. Protect our first responders. Protect and keep our military, Father, from any hurt, harm, and danger. We pray that we continue to, to work together as, as one. Unity, Father. That's what we need in this country. Unity. Togetherness. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, I don't know if it's just me or this is my first meeting as the chairman, but I'm a little warm. Uh, I might just be a little nervous or something. I don't know. But I'm a, I'm a little warm. Uh, before we get started, I just want to take this time to say that um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be, to be the chairman here of uh, the Board of County Commissioners. Um, I'm going to try to do my best to, to uh, Continue to bring unity and transparency, honesty, integrity, and character to the seat. I appreciate all that, Commissioner uh, McDaniel. I want to thank him for his service, being the uh, the chairman. Um, since I've been on the board, the only thing I know him as it was was chairman. So um, that's probably all I'm gonna be calling him is the is the chairman. I'm looking forward to a great year, great year in Gulf County. Uh, I'm excited. Um, I'm I'm excited about being the uh, being the chairman. I'm excited about where this board is going. I think we got a, a great group of guys, um, and the staff also makes makes us look good. So I appreciate the staff um, for what what they do to make us make our jobs. It's it's tough, but they they do help make our jobs a whole a whole lot easier. Uh, before we we uh, start the meeting, uh, we got a presentation we want to present to Mr. McDaniel for. You know, his all his his four years of being being the chairman, Mr. McDaniel, you can step down to the front. And if any other commissioners want to say anything to Mr. McDaniel, we'll get you all guys to step down also to the front. And uh, we got a special plaque for Mr. McDaniel. Why? Wow. While they're working their way down, it, it reads, Chairman, Chairman Thomas Ward McDaniel, for his exemplary service as Chairman of the Gulf County Board of County Commissioners from, December, uh, from January 2013 to December 2017. Yeah. Sir. Well, Chairman, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, board you. members. Thank yes, you, sir. staff. Thank you to the people. Thank you. All right, we appreciate that. First item of, of business uh, today, this morning, is the uh, consent agenda. Uh, this is where one vote covers uh, multiple items in the consent in the uh, consent agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who have any questions or concerns with the consent agenda? Anyone in the audience? Questions or concerns? 
with the consent agenda. If none, is there any one of the staff members that have any questions or concerns with the consent agenda? Is there any board members that have any questions or concerns with the consent agenda? If none, I entertain a motion that we accept the consent agenda. So moved. Got a motion by Mr. Rogers. Second by Mr. Rich. Any further board discussion? Motion passes 5 and 0. Now we're moving into county county staff business. Hey, Mr. Butler, you're up first. Mr. Chairman, I have one item. <clears throat> one item at this time. I have a couple more items on down the list when we get down to those. My first one, I'm going to give you a copy of, of this. It's a MOA. It would be a MOA if you were to adopt this between Gulf County and Franklin County to allow Franklin County to remove a derelict vessel that's on the west side of the Dakota River. We historically have not gone out and got DEP money and moved those vessels. Franklin County has. And this is for your consideration. I'm going to give you a copy of what they gave me for your consideration. If this board agrees to it, when they meet their next meeting, then they will, they will agree to it. Yes, sir. Chairman, that came in after the consent agenda was set up, so we, we didn't have the opportunity to put it in the agenda or in the consent agenda. But in a nutshell, Franklin County, they have been dealing, they've been removing old vessels that have sunken in the river system in the bay. <clears throat> Gulf County could have too, but they have uh, seen like a lot more than we do, and they've been doing this over the years. They are willing to, to remove that vessel out of the Dakota River, which is on the Gulf, Gulf County side of the river, if you're okay with it. There's no cost to us, no cost to Gulf County. They will pick it up. It'll be, the cost will be borne between Franklin County and, and the state. So my recommendation is to allow them to do it, to agree to the CMOA and let them move forward. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, any board members got any, any questions on this issue? None. Anybody in the in the public? I entertain a motion that we so move. Got a motion by Mr. McCrone. Second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Mr. McDaniel. Any further board discussion? Any opposition? Motion passes five and zero. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that's all I have at this time. I have a couple more items down the list. Okay. Yes, sir. Hold on one second, Mr. Novak. I made my first uh, chairman mistake, I guess. I actually was supposed to ask Ms. Uh, Marsha Player Lineman from the Florida Department of Health Department to come up first uh, along with uh, Ms. Sarah Hines. Uh, they want to just have, discuss some information about what's going on with the, uh, with the, the flu virus. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you. I'm Marsha Lindemann, the Administrator for the Department of Health in Gulf and Franklin Counties. Um, the number one job of the Department of Health, it's in statute, it's in our mission and our vision, is to protect the public health of the state of Florida. Uh, I personally am responsible for protecting the public health of Gulf County, and I feel compelled to come and speak to you today about the seriousness of the flu outbreak that Florida is experiencing right now, and quite frankly, Gulf County, uh, and to give you some uh, tips on how to uh, prevent that flu from affecting you or your family. Um, we are seeing an increase in flu in the state of Florida uh, and in Gulf County. We are seeing increased flu deaths in the state of Florida. We yesterday were reported our third pediatric death in the state of Florida. Those three children were not vaccinated children. Um, in Gulf County, we are seeing we are surveilling uh, health care, the health care system almost daily. We're reporting twice a week to the state about the impact of the flu vaccine. Is it dead? Okay. Nope. You're just That's good. It'll work. Um, we're, 
surveilling the impact of the flu uh, volumes in our community, our medical clinics, our hospital ERs, our prison, our schools, all are seeing an increase in, in um, flu cases right now. <clears throat> the state, it, the situation has reached such a point of being serious in the state that the state has activated what they call an incident management team. It meets each morning and it reviews activities and surveillance reports around the state. We have very sophisticated surveillance tools in the state of Florida and it, it's giving us very accurate data that we have a serious problem with flu in the state of Florida. We in Gulf County are sending up a bi-weekly report on uh, availability of flu vaccines, availability of viral, antiviral medications, and uh, flu volume activity in our health care providers. That's really all I want to say. I just want to impress upon you it's very serious. And the last thing I want to say is it's not too late to get your flu vaccine. Um, it might not prevent you from getting the flu, but it is proven absolutely clinically, scientifically proven that if you get a flu vaccine, it will lessen your risk of life-threatening effects from the flu, and it will shorten that illness. We learned something today. Sarah and I had a brief call this morning with the person in charge of surveillance for the state of Florida, and she gave us a piece of information that we hadn't seen before, so we'll push it out more often. If you get an annual vaccine, if you start your children and give them an annual flu vaccine and you get an annual flu vaccine, that gives you long-term protection against the flu. It's cumulative, the protective, protective effect of that. So if that's not something you've considered before, consider now just getting an annual flu vaccine. Are there any questions for me about the flu, the flu vaccine? Any board members? Anybody, Anybody really? Michael? Uh, just a quick one. Since our entire de building has had, had the flu, I think yeah. every commissioner and every staffer, uh, we all took the flu shot primarily, or 95% of us did. The rumor was out last week that, that they, they were changing the vaccine and that people were getting revaccinated. Does it help to have the second vaccine later in the year, or if you've taken it in November, you don't need to take it again? Michael, that's a really great question. And so the answer is if, if you're an adult and you've had a flu vaccine this season, you don't need another one. They don't change the flu vaccines mid-season. Honestly, the flu, the flu vaccines, the, the production of flu vaccines start, gosh, almost a year before the season that they'll be produced, mass produced, and the vaccinations will occur. If you are a child, your child's first flu vaccine, they need a second one to just solidify that first vaccination. But after that, just a single vaccine. And I'm going to just go ahead. I was waiting for somebody to ask me about, I'm just going to call it fake news because I, I just wanted to have the chance to say that out loud, about 10%, it only being 10% effective. Uh, we asked the statewide surveillance uh, epidemiologist today about, is it really only 10% effective? And she said, we don't know yet. She said that 10% fact came from Australia. Australia has a younger, uh, a younger, an earlier flu season than, than the United States does. And that's some of the information that they're getting from Australia. It's too soon to know yet here the effectiveness of it. But there's no denying that it will, it may not prevent you from getting sick, but it will lessen your illness and certainly uh, uh, almost guarantee uh, the prevention of life-threatening effects of it. So please get your flu vaccine. I believe the local CVS pharmacy is out at this moment. Byright has it. All the primary care providers in Gulf County have flu vaccines except for Dr. Curry's office, and the health department has it. We have the high dose, low dose, children, all the, all the ranges. So please don't hesitate to get your flu vaccine. We are doing another round of flu vaccine clinics in the schools. We're sending out the permission slips in backpacks, hopefully in the next day or two. It takes a couple days for us to get those vaccine, those permission slips back. We vaccinated 310 students in Gulf County uh, in the fall. That's about average for us, but this is a little bit more serious season. We're going to do a second round and try to catch uh, many more that didn't get it the first round. So if you have any questions, call us at the health department. Thank you so much for this opportunity to yes, really impress this on you. Yes, and then I want to just introduce a new employee to you. Real yes, ma'am. 
Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. I'm Sandy Martin, the Business Manager at Gulf County Health Department. Wanted to introduce our new planner. This is Duke Weiser. He's our Public Health Preparedness Planner. Today's his very first day, so he's been on the job about 15 minutes. <laughs> we're proud to have him. He's here in Gulf County, raising a family right here in Gulf County, so we're proud to have a local guy. Welcome to Gulf County. Yeah, and he doesn't intend to. So. Maybe next time. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to hold you that. Yes, ma'am. We have a regional epidemiologist, brand new one, in our health department right now for a visit. So we're going to scoot out the back door and go go meet with these people. So thank you so yes, much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Marsha. Thank you. All right. Moving on back to county county staff business. Uh, Mr. Novak, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I have a couple items throughout the agenda, um, things that are not listed I wanted to address with you this morning. Uh, the first was to, in the new year, bring you up to speed on the COBRA. Um, in 2017, you had approved under the county budget for us to continue to move forward with our uh, lobbying efforts um, through legislative remedy. Uh, Mr. Butler, um, Michael, uh, Mr. Yeager, and each of the commissioners, we've all met individually with each of you to discuss our ongoing efforts. Right now, we're engaged with Capitol Hill Consulting Group, otherwise known as Mr. Steve Sutherland, our former congressman. Um, he had introduced two House bills on behalf of Gulf County, um, and he is continuing his efforts to lobby and as a consultant for us in D.C. to work with Secretary Zinke's office, um, Dr. Dunn's office, and to continue to push this COBRA uh, legislation through the House and then ideally through after Natural Resources Subcommittee, the Senate, and then hopefully have the bill signed. Um, but what we needed today is in the new year to continue his services, need your ratification to approve Mr. Butler to continue to utilize it. Under our current budget, we have the funds. We just wanted the authorization to continue in 2018 working with uh, Congressman Sutherland. Do you need a motion? Yes, I do. And that's in the budget. Yes, sir. Uh, so move. Motion by Mr. McCrone, Commissioner Second. McCrone. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public? Any opposition? The motion passes 5 and 0. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, the only other item that's not on the agenda I wanted to address with you is since our last meeting, we have received a deed of conveyance for the property out at the Windmark Pier from St. Joe Company. Um, just wanted to formally thank them. We've recorded that deed. That property now is under the ownership of Gulf County. Um, we provided that deed of conveyance to the DEP and Pierce Barrett, and they are actually have met with Mr. Yeager and myself out on the site and they are currently in the design aspect of the uh, pier out at Windmark, and we hope to have that back in the next month or two. Um, but just wanted to report to you that we now own that property from St. Joe Company. And that's all I have at this time. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hammond. I don't have anything at this time. Ms. Summers. I don't have anything. Mr. Lowry. Nothing right now. Mr. Yeager. I think I'm number 10, so okay. I'll, I'll present everything at number 10. All right. Ms. Heron. No Mark and Lee today, huh? Down south. Down south. All right. Mr. Joe Paul. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, thank you for permission for allowing me to do this today. Yes, if uh, Mr. Don Butler would come out here with me, please. <laughs> Sometimes, boss, the best kept secrets are hard to keep but I think we did good this time. On behalf of the county staff, I'd like to present you this uh, picture. It says, Dear Mr. Don Butler, thank you for almost three decades of service serving this great citizens of Gulf County. You and I together have and will make America great again. Signed, Donald Trump, President of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Uh, that was well kept. <laughs> I'll find a place for you. He was so busy trying to get, keep the government from shutting down, he didn't have time to call you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Joe Paul. Mr. Butler, how long you got left? That's the Elmar. There might be more surprises. <laughs> All right, Mr. Mr. Houston. Not this time, Ms. Kelly. Good 
morning, Commissioners. Um, I just wanted to give you a couple of quick updates from the TDC. Um, we've received our bed tax collections for October and November, um, both of which were up over last year. November was actually up 27%, which brings our year to date for 9% um, for the year. So we're off to a healthy start. Um, we also are on schedule for our visitor guide and the 2018 book should be here hopefully this week. So I'll be um, getting some of those out and our spring campaign is in full effect. So I just wanted to give you guys an update. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. It's great news. Ms. Roberts. All right. Madam Clerk. Ms. Lynn. No, Chair. All right. That ends county staff business. We'll move right ahead to, to board business. Mr. McDaniel, you want to take the lead? I can. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sir. Uh, I have one very important item. This coming Monday, the 29th, and we were Hitchcock in the Stone Mill Creek area, and later in the meeting, Mr. Smallwood will come up and make a recommendation to us. But uh, we're going to have a groundbreaking for a new fire station. And uh, bring you up to speed, the property is donated to the county by Mr. and Ms. Charles Pitts, who reside in that area. They graciously donated us just short of two acres. So the county has cleared it. And I was down at the state, and uh, after we got the property, Mr. Pitts asked, he said, well, when do you think? I said, well, Mr. Pitts, well, it may be a while. we we got to come up with the money. And I, uh, uh, a friend of mine, Senator Denise Grimsley, she represents the 26th Senatorial District, which is down in... Uh, Okeechobee County, DeSoto County, Hardy County, uh, Polk County, what's another one? Highlands County, right in the center, down where a lot of the citrus and cattle country. And we have some representative here today from Deseret Cattle. I'm sure they uh, had a few cattle grazing in, in some of these counties I named. But anyway, I went to her and talked to her. I said, I need help. But in three months, she had landed us $400,000 for this new station. I said, well, Denise, I thank you, but we got a lot more hurdles in the road. Well, we got it before the appropriations. We got it through there. It didn't get killed there. We got it to the governor's desk. I said, oh, my goodness. So we lobbied Governor Scott, and he did not veto it. So we're getting brand new fire station for the north end and it'll serve everyone that means everyone from the Calhoun County line down if you live in that area up in there he'll have help him with his insurance coming on down but we're going to have this groundbreaking next Monday 29th at 8 o'clock we're all time one of these days I wish we get this county all on the same time but anyway we would I would graciously and this board would graciously appreciate you coming up and I think uh, also uh, Senator Grimsley she served I want to say three terms in the house and she elevated up to the Senate and she's going to run for Commissioner of Agriculture but uh, some young lady out of Sebring Florida come up here and help a little old place in Gulf County to me that's that's very gracious but I just had the opportunity to sit down and talk with her and she came through for Gulf County she surely did so any of you if you can if you would come up that's the 29th 8 o'clock we are time up right behind the creek stop go up 71 turn left on the stone mill and you can't miss it it's right there on the left but Mr. Chairman that's all I have at this Sir, time thank you Commissioner McDaniel uh, Commissioner Rogers I just wanted to say thank you to the staff and St. Joe Corporation for that land out there at St. Joe Beach. I know y'all worked hard to get that. Um, it's going to be great for Gulf County to finally have a here. Not here yet. You know, we still got some hurdles, but we're on our way. Thank y'all very much. Mr. Rich, got anything? 
Yes, sir. I'll be there at the groundbreaking uh, Monday morning. Thank you. Mr. McCrone. I uh, just want to brag on the TDC a little bit. Y'all hearing good things. Uh, had somebody brag on y'all the other day, said y'all were very pleasant to work with, uh, somebody in the charter business. So I just want to thank you. All I have. So uh, I have one thing I wanted to present to the, uh, to the board. The uh, 10th Street Committee has been uh, meeting monthly. And uh, we have all agreed on a uh, conceptual site plan that, uh, that I would like to present to the board for board approval uh, this morning um, so we can continue to move the uh, move this vision forward. I'm going to get Mr. Uh, Smallwood to come forward. He has uh, some of those uh, site plans might be laid out on on the uh, in the back somewhere. But uh, I, I, before we. Uh, uh, and I, I need the board to give me a motion to uh, to uh, to move forward, but I want to make a couple, just two changes on that. Um, those, uh, if you look at the site plan, the uh, the 180 foot, 180 feet fields. I want to make those uh, 200 feet instead of 180. So that was, that was the only two changes. Both of those 180 need to be 200. So if if I can get someone in the, do move. Give me a motion to. Uh, make those changes and to approve this, this site plan second second all right so i got a motion by commissioner mcdaniel second by mr mccrone yes any uh board discussion on this i uh, just want to say mr chairman thank you for your work on this a long time coming yes sir anyone in the in the public on this anyone in the public uh, Smallwood, you want to say a little something about it? I, no, sir. I don't have anything to add other than, um, you know, the, the committee last Tuesday morning, the Parks Committee uh, voted to move forward with this. The City Commission reviewed it their meeting last week also. They voted to move forward with it. So uh, it's it's here in front of you uh, this morning. And then the idea would be to take this and, and try to make it a reality now. Mm -hmm. So kind of move from the conceptual phase into the into the permit and the design phase and, and try to get this thing constructed so and there are extra copies going around i can print more if there's folks in the public that need more certainly can get you know we'll distribute more hard copies or emailed out or whatever <coughs> we need to so okay. we can certainly do that all right we appreciate your time your hard work yes sir thank you come on, come, can you come up come up to the microphone please? oh to the uh to the fields the 180 foot fields See those fields say that are 180. They already they say 180. We're gonna make those 200. Just add 20 feet to each one. Well, we Miss. Uh, can, you, can you come up to the mic before we can get your name for the record, please? The reason being is we had a, we had opportunity to speak with a guy that does uh, baseball tournaments, and so a lot of times when teams come, they look for fields that are, are at least 200 feet. Oh, for tournaments. Yes. So that you have other teams coming yes, into the yes. town. Please give your name. Yeah, please yes, state your I'm name Marcia for the record. Casey. Okay, so that's just 200 feet. Okay. That and just, add, just add an extra additional 20 feet to each one. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any any more questions from the public? My 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 goal is to um, uh, once again take this back to the uh, to the committee and. Hopefully, uh, when I when we meet with the committee, we can get a, a budget, and then I can bring a budget back to the board and let us know how much um, the project is uh, is going is going to cost us. Do I have any opposition to the mo to the motion? All right, motion passes five and zero. Oh. And that was all, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Um, I know you did a motion before to expand, extend it from 180 to 200, correct? Yes, sir. And then there was a second to ratify the conceptual plan to move forward from the commission? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I thought you put it in all in one motion. It was all one, it was all one motion. Thank you. Okay. And that is all I have. Uh, at this time, we're going to ask Ms. Uh, Ms. Barbara Beltenhausen, can you come on up, Ms. Barbara? Off leash dog park behind the library. She's going to come up and discuss something for us. Good morning. 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 Good morning.
morning. When you get to the mic, state your name for the for the record, Miss Miss Barbara. Bingo. I have submitted. Uh, Set your name for the record, oh, Ms. Barbara. Barbara Veldheisen. And uh, is that all you need is my name? Address. Mm -hmm. At 340 Marina Drive, Port St. Joe. You have to go ahead. Good. Okay, thanks. Um, I have submitted uh, uh, a recommendation for, cons for the commissioner's consideration for an off leash dog park on the property behind the library and the senior citizen center. I have submitted a two-page document to the commissioners outlining what I think are the necessary requirements and the concerns that have to be um, worked out. Uh, and I can certainly go through those if you'd like. The, thing, the documents that I just handed you were the petitions that I um, distributed around town and those are the signatures that I collected. There are 24 pages of 15, sig uh, 15 signatures on each page. So I wanted to do this because I wanted you to be aware that this wasn't something that I was just dreaming up in my head, but that I have talked to people in the community. Um, so um, there are some considerations Obviously, the things that I like about the property behind the library is that um, it is almost fenced. Uh, it has gates there that need to be reinstalled. It has access to water for the animals, and it has parking. Those three things are very important. Um, the con the uh, concerns that I have are is that in my discussion with the sheriff, we need to make allowances for the training and the maintenance of the uh, dogs in the canine crew. Um, the, obviously, the fencing has to be completed once the boundaries of the park are identified. There is, it is about, I'm going to say 60% fence now. There is fencing there, but it's just been busted open and thrown to the side. Um, I can only assume, I don't know, but I can only assume that it was done so that they could cut down the trees uh, that were cut down some time ago. Um, we need to have uh, stations for dog bags and uh, collection. Uh, I'm recommending that uh, four, which is normal for large places like this. Um, it needs to be signed for liability and, um, and, and we need to have water Plum, plumbed over to the park inside the park so that water is accessible. Um, so those are the concerns. I think I've outlined them. I don't know what other concerns you might have. Hold on one second, Ms. Barbara. That was your time. Get a motion to extend. Move. A motion by Mr. McCall. Second. Second by Mr. Rogers. Go ahead. Um, if you have any other questions, I can answer them. Um, I don't have a lot of history here in Port St. Joe, so you'll have to sort of help me out here. Um, but what I'm proposing is that there needs to be a 30-day work group or a 60-day work group to work out the details. Uh, we've had some offers uh, donating fencing. We've had offers of people who are willing to help put the fence up. Um, and um, so those all have to be worked out. So what I'm asking is, can we get a 30-day work group or a 60-day work group together to work out the details and come back to the commission and basically make a recommendation? I don't. Um, I had an opportunity to talk to speak with Ms. Barr, but I, I don't think we need a, no, no type of. We don't need to make a type of motion to just do a 30-day or 60-day work group. To. If I understand the request, it, Ms. Barber, you're asking that the commission establish a committee to to vet this project is that the proposal so that if there was a consideration of the board after public comment 
commissioner that any commissioner can make a motion if you wanted to establish such a um, a review process. There's no there's nothing that compels the commission to do anything. It's certainly up to you all to right. ask the questions and right. move forward. Okay. Okay. We got any any public comment on uh, this issue? Can you can you come on up to the uh, to the podium, please? Make sure you state your name once again and your Marcia address for the Casey. record. Uh, it's M A R C I A. Most people spell it wrong. Sorry. Um, I think it's a give your address to Miss uh, Seven Six Woodward Avenue. I think this is a per perfect opportunity for this town. Um, that area, if it's extended from Cecil Coston Parkway, it can go all the way back to the, um, the, sh the animal shelter there. That gives the shelter more visibility to get those animals adopted out. You also have a pause prison program that you have prisoners who have served their time who also work over there, and they probably could also volunteer to help with the training of some of the animals in the community. I think it's a perfect opportunity for this county. Thank you, Ms. Walsh. Anybody else with a uh, comment on this issue? Yes, sir. Sheriff? As you know, that area is being used as a uh, canine training field for the sheriff's office at this time. Currently, we have two uh, canines that are being trained, one's in narcotic detection and the other one's narcotic detection and full service dog. Um, if this is moved forward, I will be needing to look for another canine training field. Um, the, uh, I spoke with Ms. Barber. She did come in the office and speak to me back before the holidays. Uh, the training officer that I use is, is a contract employee. Um, he's been off the last couple of months out of town with his family for the holidays. He's back in. We just started doing a little bit of training last week to get another dog certified. We ran the idea by him, and due to the scents and other dogs being there on that field, it would absolutely contaminate it to where training would be impossible for him to conduct it there. So uh, not opposed to a, a, a park for, for animals, uh, but that location right there, if you do choose to use that, I'll have to look for another location to do the training of the uh, um, the, the, the canines there. So uh, just want to make sure you take that into consideration. What is existing out there now, of course, is our obstacle course for the uh, dogs when we're doing the obedience and uh, the training in the very beginning on that. We also have a canine uh, office, if you will, that's a portable building that's out there that serves as their offices uh, if they're training during the summer to get out of the heat for a little bit and do some of their paperwork uh, during the hot hours of the day. Um, that's located in that general location as well. But uh, once again, I'm not opposed to it, but uh, I'll have to relocate everything if you choose to go that direction there. Okay. Mr. Chairman, may yes, I please? Yes, sir. Chair, Thank recognize you. Mr. McDaniel. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we just in a few days or a very short period of time, we will be moving into our new public works building. Last year there was some discussion, and if you'll notice, we, there was a lot of pine trees out there. We cut the pines down for two reasons. One, we have for future use of that, and secondly, the trees were cut in case of a hurricane, they wouldn't blow down. and get the guy wires and tear the cable, the tower down, it fall probably through the courthouse or somewhere. But after we get into our, uh, it's in the plans, we're going to have to secure that area. We're going to put a, uh, we'll have a fence across there. The young lady was talking about where the dogs could go all the way down to the Humane Society. Well, that'll be fenced off, that area. So. I just want to bring that up. I, I, I know uh, uh, they have a good, uh, out at, uh, you say you live in Gulf Air? No, I live in the Marines. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I, I apologize there. But uh, I know out at uh, Beacon Hill Veterans Park, we have a nice area out there, people, and they utilize it with their animals, you know, where they could. And I, 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 I'm all for you, but we have got some future plans for that land there and we're going to have to secure it we've got to secure we've got thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment and all in there we've got to secure 
that area. So you mentioned about having a long walkway. That'll kill that. May I? You may. Um, I actually walk a dog in that property every morning, and it is not my intention to go all the way to the Humane Society. That is that is not. Well, I misunderstood you. No. Uh, I apologize. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, the boundaries have have not yet been determined, uh, you know, throwing out ideas. But obviously there's a, a tarred area where the new public works building is. That's a perfect boundary right there. I have no problem with that. And if you need to, if you need to secure that area, that's, that would be the boundary because that's plenty of room. If I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I think what Mr. Uh, McDaniel is saying that the building, it's not just about all the equipment that the public works has is going to move over to that building. So everything's going to move over. To, am I right, Ms. McDaniel? So, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. You may. Yes, we have security. EOC has some equipment here. Our security fence will be over here is our EOC building, next building over. It will be right behind it going from the ditch out here on that Knoll Street. Am I correct there? They're coming across all the way to our Guess you'd call it our maybe northeast boundary. I'm Security. That the end of the tarred area is the boundary of that building. Well, now that. Tar ends, yeah, that's where now we that the hadn't been established by our staff this time, but we have there, and then we do have. Sheriff said he utilizes that for his training, canine. But uh, we can work up something. Seriously, seriously, I think we can. Let me see. We're going to secure that area back there. We have too much stuff it's unsecured. Let me just add this, Ms. Bob. We, we definitely don't want to put the sheriff in the hard spot. We don't want to move. We don't want, want to move them. Let's just to move forward with this issue. Let's just hand it off to the staff, and let's see what the staff come back with recommendations. Of, if they can find an uh, a area that they might think will be suitable for a dog park um, in, in, that, in this area, um, let's, see what, let's see what they can come up with um, before we... Um, we move forward and mr chairman yes sir please ma'am um have you asked the city about this since you're a city resident and we are in the city of port st joe here no i've come to the county because it's county property does the city have anything available mr rogers i couldn't <laughs> answer that right off I think there's some other areas that you could look at, you know, let the staff look at it. Yeah, no. yeah, let's hand it off to the staff and let's, let's see what the staff can come back. See if the staff can come back with a recommendation for the board. See what we can do. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Bond. We uh, we gonna we gonna go ahead and move forward. We're gonna ha we're gonna hand it off to the staff and let the staff come back with recommendations for us. When will that be? Uh, we we hope uh, they'll come back by the next board meeting with some some type of recommendation. The next meeting? Yes. All right, we're moving on to number seven. Uh, number six. I'm sorry. Beach restoration project and report. Who's uh, who's the lead man on that? Mr. Chairman, we had your special meeting at 8.15 this morning, and Michael Nebraska gave you all the details on beach renourishment. He gave you a recommendation on how he would recommend you to move forward. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, I reviewed Michael's uh, proposal in his, his presentation to you the last couple of days. And um, I'd, one, I'd have Michael come back up to the podium. And two, I'd recommend the board do move forward and and start the process. Let Mike work up the bid documents and the new bid specs, put it out for bid, and get that project going. And the second part is, I would recommend that <clears throat> after we make a legal review, that we purchase that piece of property that we were talking about in the earlier meeting. Purchase it. It will up the ante for the state to keep more money in. Hopefully, it will. That's what we'll be working on, trying to figure out. Yeah, I think we, uh, by buying that piece of property, the ROI on it, the return on investment, will be greater than what the property costs are going to be. But we're at the point now we we need. I think we need to move forward with the beach preservation project. 
Yeah, the floor, Mr. Mike. Yes, the, um, what we would recommend is what we presented earlier that today, which would be to remove the, the North uh, Beachville area and solely focus on the southern uh, fill limits, which is between Stump Hole and uh, uh, the uh, Rish Park. And how we would propose to do that is to reverse bid this to give contractors a maximum price and based on who comes in at the most cubic yards and uh, would be the uh, awarded the contract provided that that volume is sufficient to do what we would like. So that is our recommendation to the board. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we got a motion by Mr. Uh, Commissioner McCrone. Second for discussion. Second by Commissioner McDane for discussion. Mr. McDane, you have uh, four. In our earlier meeting, I listened and I understood what you said there about it. But now, we're going to do this, the stump hole area, and move to the north there. And I know there's going to be, you're going to submit plans to whether we have 150, I'm just, these are numbers now, 150 feet, 250 feet, 300 feet, how far we can go out and how far we can go toward Rich Park. That is that correct, sir. Much, yes, yeah. All right, sir. Well, that, that's one thing I want to say. And uh, secondly, I want to thank the people down at the Cape. Very patient people, understanding people. And uh, I know have been beating this horse for, gosh, I don't know, close to 10 years, more five years. Anyway, but I want to thank them for their patience, and hopefully we can get get this thing moving, yes. moving. Mr. Chairman, my second stands. Yes, sir. Any further board discussion? Yes. Mr. Roth? Mm. Mr. Attorney, is this bid procedure all up and above board? Yes, e yes uh, Commissioner. What, what you did in 2017 at the end, you rejected those bids that came in seven six seven million dollars over what your uh, budget was and as you've heard from the reports in the workshop today we've gone back the staff has come up with these recommendations what this will do today if you authorize and accept the recommendations is to start the process over we'll reverse bid it um, it's just another approach to it but we give our vendors the opportunity to see what our budget is and what they can produce in terms of volume and in the meantime also approving those expenditures that mr dombrowski has discussed today for the surveys and the additional work to be considered but it has all been vetted we've reviewed the recommendations um, and there's nothing problematic about it thank you another board discussion anyone in the public on this beach restoration coming up dr hart Pat Hardman, Coastal Community Association. Again, uh, just for the record, I want to tell you how much I appreciate all the work done by the staff. They have gone above and beyond your call of duty. Uh, I will hope you pass this today so that we have an option. We do have, as late as last week, I was sick and had an appointment, and Michael and uh, Warren and Butch went up, and we have $3 million back into a appropriations budget that could possibly come forward. So when we reverse bid, don't lock that out if we could get use that later if it happens to come to quotation. It's a long shot, but it's in appropriations now. And so let's hold that out there and uh, make sure that we can use that if we happen to be lucky enough to get it. And I just really appreciate every effort that y'all have made. Yes. Thank you. If I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Chair. Uh, on my motion, just three million if it was to come in. Uh, we could leave that option. You know. if, if we can leave the number out, let the staff come up with the number because we're uh, going to back out if the board so chooses to buy that lot from that amount. And, 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 and if we get more money, we'll just add more volume. Okay, and, I, and the lot's in that motion also. I, uh, that was going to be our Okay, request. that's fine. All right. So we, added, we made that changes. Um, Mr. McDaniel, your second still stands, right? It does, Okay, Mr. Chairman. Any more board, board discussion? Anyone, anyone else in the public on this issue? Come on up, ma'am. State your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Janet Grinzinger, 851, uh, sorry, that's my wrong address, 2579 State Road 30A. 
Yeah, the floor. Thank you. Um, I, this doesn't affect me at all. It just popped in my head when we were talking about from the stump hole north to possibly Rish. What about those folks that are north of Rish Park that have paid into that? I don't know if there'll be repercussions or if, you know, what they think about their money situation. Just something to think about. Uh, the boss, you want to speak on? On that issue please yes uh, part of that recommendation that we did have was to um, r repair hot spots on the southern end through a truck haul so by all means that we're not totally deleting the the northern section of this it would be more of a uh, going out and hit, uh, remediating hot spots as they're needed so that would still be part of that program and, and Mike so, so everybody knows in the workshop this morning the northern portion of the beach is increasing in a lot of places that, that is that is so true. everybody knows that the yep. study has been okay yep. and that most of the sand that shows that is accreting on that northern section is from the southern so eventually they are going to get a portion of that sand okay. any, any more questions for uh, mr. Dombrowski and the public All right, we got a motion by Commissioner McCrone, second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any opposition to? Yes, sir. Hold on. One more. Okay. I apologize. I missed the motion. Don's recommendation was to, to do two things, to do the, the bid, reverse bid as recommended, and to buy that lot contingent upon the county attorney making sure that we could get access. You know, we've, we've attempted to buy two of these lots in the past, and when we got down to closing, it, it was a problem with access. We'll only buy it if it provides access to raise our the state's Absolutely. match portion. Absolutely. So as long as I just make sure that's in the motion. Move that in your motion? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Any uh, opposition to the motion? No opposition. Motion passes 5-0. and oh. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Dombrowski. Yes, sir. All right, moving on down to number seven, procurement policy amendments and revision. Mr. Hammond. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, um, as it comes down to you, as you know, over the last few meetings, uh, regular meetings, you've addressed the procurement policy for the county. Um, over the last eight years or so, we've had several revisions. We've added and uh, a language. Most recently in December, we added P3, Public-Private Partnership, Florida Statute language, as well as Competitive Consultant Negotiation Act language to address two uh, provisions that the county has used, which we did in December, to move forward on a couple of our private partner, private-public partnerships. Um, in addition, we've now met with the uh, Ms. Norris and her staff at the clerk's office in an ongoing effort to try to address issues that come up for the county in the procurement um, issues that come up on a weekly basis. Um, so what you have in front of you, um, the staff is continuing to meet. We met as recently as last week. Um, Ms. Norris and her staff provided some additional comments that we hope to continue to revise this policy in the months to come. Right now, what we have from Mr. Butler and Mr. Hammond, as you'll see, there's a, a few minor changes, but what we've done now is we've added the authority uh, for the administrator under number nine to move forward on state purchases that have been previously approved by this commission uh, under your budget on an annual basis and I'll give you an example you all uh, the commission approves a budget um, for each department if there's a state procurement and a state contract that is out there um, each time we bring that back to you all um, and looking back over your records over the last seven and a half years uh, I did not find where you did not accept the recommendation of staff to move forward on a state contract Another county goes through the procurement process, secures the best bid, um, and we've presented those to you over the years. This would give the administrator, when it is presented under a state contract for a department purchase that's been budgeted, to move forward without the commission approval. Um, so that is the first amendment. The second is with regards to change orders also, uh, authorizing the administrator to sign off on change orders. Um, most recently we have a change order, I think, for $6 and another for $0 
but it needs to come back to you each time for those change orders. Um, but we are asking for the administrator to have that authority. And then the third is the uh, authorization for professional services agreements that you budgeted. Uh, we indicated earlier today that the uh, consulting uh, group that we're working with in Washington um, to have the administrator, once you budget the funds for that, that he has the authorization to move forward and execute those agreements. Um, the final under 3C would be the administrator authorization for purchase of commodities. Historically, when they purchase chemicals, aggregate, rock materials, under pre previously approved commission annual budget. Each one of these provisions that I've stated for you that we've discussed um, through the administration are budgeted items. They're not outside the budget. So what you're giving is your administrator the authorization to move forward and operate in the county's business on a daily basis without calendaring and bringing it back to you all um, for what would be a administrative or a nominal amount. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, and again, as I've said before in previous meetings on the procurement policy, it's an ongoing process. We're hoping that as we move through this, we'll have a, uh, a very comprehensive and robust policy, but as you've seen over the last few months, we will continue to add to it as we meet with staff and Ms. Norris. Um, but those are the recommendations of staff today to add to your procurement policy. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Novak. You heard the uh, recommendations come from Mr. Novak. Any board uh, discussion on this? By any board members? Chairman, do I need to abstain from this vote? No, sir. Okay. Not no, no sir. Okay. So we need a motion, right? Yes, sir. I entertain a motion. Say move. move. Got a motion by Mr. Rich. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any further, uh, any further board discussion? Anyone in the public on the procurement policy? Any opposition to the motion? Motion passes five and zero. Now moving on down to number eight, public hearing, county road abandonments. Once again, Mr. Novak, you have the floor. Keep it from you. Keep your stack cut down. Mr. Chairman, um, Lynn's going to help us with the audiovisual. Yes, sir. Um, as your December 12th meeting, if you recall, and actually on November 28th as well, the commission instructed the staff to move forward on the proposed abandonments of several county roads, right-of-ways, um, and we've moved forward in that direction on several, uh, one of them being County Line Road, another being County Road GT14, also Muskogee and Rish Harbor. Um, as we've gone through over the holidays and got ready for today's meeting, um, we've received correspondence and uh, communications from some of the landowners uh, through our commissioner and the staff with regards to Muskogee and Rish Harbor. Um, as I understand it, uh, Commissioner McDaniel is working and talking with the folks out there, um, and that's an ongoing issue. There was a request that that, that be uh, addressed at the next month's meeting and be tabled and removed from today's. Is that correct, Commissioner? Chairman. Yes, sir, you may. Yes, it will not be addressed at this meeting today. Okay. Um, and per that uh, request and direction, um, that issue was not noticed. The two that were noticed for today, Chairman, Commissioners, is County Line Road and County Road GT14. Um, Lynn's going to bring them up. As you recall from December 12th and November 28th, the proposed abandonments uh, with Deseret uh, ranches of North Florida uh, and, and I think Calvin Winder, the attorney for Deseret's here today. I think Michael Archibald wanted to be here, but he couldn't. But Calvin, are you here? There you are. Hey, good morning. Um, Calvin and I have spoken over the holidays as well. As we move through this process, the proposed abandonments per the Florida statute and your county policies are that we would have public hearings. You would take the property owner's comments and considerations into uh, into uh, your deliberation and we'd have public hearings you voted on December 12th to move forward with the abandonment process for these two roads um, in in consideration of this abandonment as well Deseret has worked with the county and has proposed that they are going to convey over Odina boat ramp to the county for future parks and recreation purposes which we've uh, had a lot of progress on we finalized the legal 
um, and that is something that will follow. In addition to that, Road 12, um, working with uh, Deseret, it was, they were going to relinquish any legal access or right to that to the county as well. For the purposes of today's public hearings, they've been advertised in accordance with Florida law. Um, you each have the notice in front of you, which is the first two pages. Beyond that, uh, under county policy, is we would adopt a resolution for each of these abandonments after your consideration. Um, you've had several public hearings, as I've indicated, under Florida Statute 197. And after your consideration and public hearing today, those resolutions, if you would allow me afterward to read them by title, uh, will be up for your consideration. If you abandon these roads, we'll move forward. I'll provide them to Ms. Norris and the clerk's office. They'll become public record. We'll put the notice of the resolution in our uh, regular circulation and public notice, and they will be abandoned officially by the county. Um, and the private landowners, obviously, will then have that uh, property uh, access. And it'll be cut off for public purposes. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I don't know, Calvin, if you wanted to add anything to either of those issues. Um, Chairman, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Yes, sir. So let me make sure I got this correct. We're going to do a, we're going to do a public hearing on County Line Road first, and then we'll do one on yes, sir. GT4. That is correct. Okay. Okay. I got you. All right. So now we're going to have a public hearing on County, uh, County Line Road, uh, open to the public for, for, for questions. Anybody in the public got questions on County Line Road? The questions are closed to the close to the public, open to the uh, board to the board of county commissioners and any commissioner with any questions on county line road. Any commissioners? None. All right. Um, I want to read the resolution? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Chair, uh, Chair, Mr. Chairman, the resolution of the Gulf County Board of County Commissioners whereby granting the abandonment of said roadways and right-of-ways commonly referred to as County Line Road and directing county departments for assistance in the abandonment and implementation as follows. Uh, it's the Gulf County Board of County Commissioners considered the following abandonment. Uh, Gulf County owned and maintained right-of-way commonly historically referred to as County Line Road that begins on State Highway 22 in Gulf County along and adjacent to parcels owned by Deseret Ranches of North Florida LLC and extends for approximately 6.94 miles heading south by southeast to its terminus on a parcel owned also by Deseret Ranches of North Florida which intersects with Pleasant Rest Road in Gulf County and it's whereas the board has received the above uh, Gulf County GIS references and description, setting forth specific descriptions of the abandonments and are attached for the resolution for clarity. Uh, Gulf County has properly noticed and conducted public hearings on December 12th, also on January 23rd for this proposed abandonment pursuant to Florida Statute 187, and wherein the board unanimously voted during December 12th to move forward with the abandonment and set a public hearing date for consideration and adoption of this authorizing resolution. It is set for your uh, consideration today. It reads, hereby abandons the stated roadway and right-of-ways as defined herein. Proper notice, public hearing, and authorizing zone to the Board of County Commissioners. Be it further resolved that the Board has accepted this proposed abandonment based in part on the notice public hearing, Board comment, discussion and detailed conditions, and affirmative representations of the property and owner and or their legal representatives presented in written or oral testimony to the official county record that include their consent and request for the subject abandonment for which a here and after shall be the adjacent landowner's exclusive maintenance obligations in perpetuity to maintain said roadways and right-of-ways. Be it further resolved, the board directs county staff to provide said res resolution to the landowners for implementation and fulfillment of the stated conditions and obligations of the private parties. It's set up for the chairman's signature um, to be witnessed by Ms. Norris and to be made part of public record, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Novak. You heard the resolution read by uh, Mr. Novak. Can I get a need a motion to uh, move forward with this? Can I get a motion to move forward. Motion by County Line Road. County Line Road. Motion by Commissioner McDaniel. Second. Second by Mr. Rich. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the public? County Line Road. Any opposition to the motion? Motion passes five and zero. Oh. All right, Mr. Novak, you had the floor. Mr. Chairman, the second is County Road GT14. Um, again, these were uh, put up um, 
and advertised. I will skip through the entire resolution. I'll read it. It is whereas the Gulf County Board of County Commissioners considered the following abandonment as follows. Gulf County owned and maintained right of way commonly and historically referred to as Gulf County Road GT14 that be begins on State Highway 22 in Gulf County along and adjacent to parcels owned by Desert Ranches of North Florida LLC and extends for approximately 5.07 miles heading south to its terminus on a parcel owned also by Desert Ranches of North Florida which intersects with Williams Bay Road in Gulf County. Um, the additional language is, as I stated prior on the previous resolution, uh, setting up for your consideration adoption following public hearing, Mr. Chairman. Sir, and I will have a public hearing on Gulf County Road GT14. It's open to the public for public for any questions. Anybody in the public with questions on GT14 Road GT14? Anyone? Okay, close to the public board members. Any board members? questions on road GT14 none all right close to the board on you mr. Novak mr. chairman if the board would entertain a motion to, for the adoption of that abandonment need a, can I get a motion to uh, adoption of that abandonment of GT County Road GT14 I move motion by mr. rich Second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any further, uh, any further board discussion? County Road, GT14. Anyone in the public? In opposition to the motion? Motion passes 5 and 0. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for that. Um, just to, uh, for the public, uh, February 27th is your next regular scheduled commission meeting. Um, between now and then, the staff will continue to work with uh, Commissioner McDaniel on the other two proposed uh, abandonments that we started the process on. Um, and with regards to the two that you just adopted, we'll move, work with the clerk's office to get these notices advertised and posted as part of public record. And I'll also work with Mr. Winder and Deseret for the Odina and Road 12. Ideally, we'll come back in February and present those uh, conveyances for Odina Boat Ramp to you all. For your, uh, you voted at the last meeting to accept it. I'll pro uh, ideally formally present that deed to you to vote for and accept at your uh, February meeting. So number nine, we, we just took care of number nine. Odina Boat Ramp. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Novak. All right, we're moving on down to number 10. A multi-year implementation plan. Mr. Yeager. Here we go. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. I'll be as brief as I can. Y'all have had a, a full agenda so far, and I know you've got a lot to go. I've actually, before I get to the multi-year implementation plan, uh, as y'all know, we've been working uh, with Eastern Shipbuilding, St. Joe Company, the Port Authority, on the property uh, and, and on the floating dry dock and, and uh, the Triumph uh, our triumph submittal and um, wanted to let you know that the Port Authority has actually sent a letter uh, in support of that entire project along with that that letter for uh, consideration of the board they wanted to submit to y'all and ask y'all for a an ownership piece and they had they had requested a 50 percent ownership of that floating dry dock so uh, I had uh, uh, initially when they had started those discussions, I said, look, get, get a motion of your board and, and we will present that back to our board and that's what we're doing here today is to present that back to you, their request for 50% 50, 50 ownership of the dry dock. And so if you have any questions on that, uh, the staff and I will do everything we can to answer. Any, uh, any questions for Mr. Yeager on that proposal? Any board members? No questions. Uh, in in that, uh, I think uh, there's a lot of things that we need to consider and that you need to consider, and, and to help you make those decisions on on when you you make those decisions. One of the things is is uh, the next Triumph board meeting is on the 29th, and so we will know I, uh, what we have been told by the uh, chairman of the Triumph Committee and also the, uh, uh, the staff of the Triumph Committee is they'll be ready to put these things in a couple of different pots. And, and those pots will be either go to full application for this, these funds or we need some additional uh, information on these funds. So what, what we're hearing, we actually had a uh, conference call, the staff, uh, last Friday 
At 2.30, we had a conference call with the staff of Triumph, and, and they, they had a few questions. So I think um, what that may wind up being in the, is they've always said that they may need 50% match money with, with any monies that you've actually requested. And what we've requested is $28 million for the entire uh, construction of that uh, design and construction of that uh, floating dry dock. So I'm not sure what percentage of that that Triumph is going to wind up uh, funding, but that's something to consider when you consider how you divvy up any, any ownership for all of us uh, at that point because I'm, uh, I would feel sure that if they said we're going uh, to provide 75% uh, and you got to provide the other 25%, then that's going to fall back to some of the folks with the Eastern and, and others, uh, and then that will confuse a little bit of the ownership. So it may be something that you want to table, or it may be something that you want to address right now, but it's just it's, it, it's up to the board or how you want to address that. Okay, and, and I'll defer to if there's any further comment, if I've covered it as about as well as I can cover it. Chair recognizes Commissioner McCall. So at this time, we, we don't have a firm number, actually, of what we have an idea of what the dry dock's going to cost. But as far as ownership, uh, something we need to look at down the where are we at, I guess, is what it uh, want me to go. Yeah. We, I just want to say that, that uh, and we've had ongoing conversations with everybody, and positive, productive, ongoing conversations. And I had a, an impromptu meeting uh, with the chairman and their attorney, and, and we could all agree on this, that never before in our time, not in my 25 years with the county, has the county, the Port Authority, the city, all been on the same page, all rowing in the same direction, all striving for the same goal. So we would like to continue negotiations. We've had good faith negotiations. Uh, we've gone back and forth to the board, meeting individually with you about splitting uh, any revenues, splitting any sales, splitting any equity. Uh, I don't think we're to that point of that we can agree on that at this time, but we can get there. And I think I think it's it's going to depend on who has to put up the money in in what location. If Eastern has to put up a huge chunk of money, they're going to want a huge chunk of ownership. And, and the, the idea is to keep this in public control, especially if public money pays for it, whoever owns it. So we, we're having productive uh, negotiations, and we need to keep those lines of communications open. Uh, but I don't think we're prepared to make a recommendation pro or con on that request today. Just to, to give you uh, something a little further, Mr. Chairman, this uh, we made a, a, a submittal of what we thought a dry dock uh, would cost of that magnitude, of that size, and those type things, and it's it's totally an estimate. Um, a, as you will see further down, you've got some um, you've got some uh, engineering uh, companies that that responded to a, uh, a request to design that dry dock. Once you design that dry dock, you'll have a better little little better understanding of what that dry dock is going to cost. And so I, I think while we've said $28 million, for all, for all we know, it may be $15 million or it may be $35 million. Uh, but there's just a lot of unknowns still with this process. But I think we'll get further down the road on the 29th when we, when, uh, uh, and I would encourage each one of you to be there if you can. It's in, it's in Apalachicola at the <coughs> Board of County Commissioners meeting route on, on the 29th. I think it's 1 o'clock. But uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of unanswered questions yet, so. That's all to be considered by y'all. So what I'm hearing, you want to, we need to motion to table further discussion. Uh, or, or either, uh, yes, that, that would be fine. A motion to table and, and let, let staff continue to work with uh, uh, the Port Authority and Eastern Shipbuilding and Triumph <laughs> and, and let us come back at a later date to say, here's what Triumph, here's what Triumph presented and here's what we can, here's what we think that we can work out and and go from there. So a motion to the table would be fine. I entertain a motion. So move. Motion by Commissioner McCall. I get a second. I'll second. Second by Commissioner McDaniel. Any further uh, board discussion? Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? Any opposition to the motion? Motion to table passes five and zero. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll proceed with what was on the agenda. Now, the uh, your MYP plan. If you'll remember, back in uh, December, uh, you had approved a plan. We had recommended through our grant consultant that uh, 
the board come up with a five-year plan to submit to Treasury. Uh, over the next five years, you'll accumulate probably another $5 million in your pot. As you know, you've committed $2.8 million of your first amount of money, and that's going directly to your uh, beach restoration project as part of your funding for your beach restoration project. We, are th we are, uh, have submitted the grant for that, so we think we're uh, in line with timing of that project and that type thing. Uh, but going forward, we got these other, uh, other projects that you've actually already uh, recommended that we proceed with. So the five-year plan, I just wanted to give you a, a, an update of where we're at. We'll need action on one, uh, uh, well, on two of these, on, on two of these items. And I think the, I think the, probably the attorney's got some of the information on that. But before he gets to that, I wanted to mention the welding program uh, that you've committed for uh, Weewahitchka High School. We're still working with uh, the school system on that. Uh, we're working with the grant consultant. All those documents are are in. We'll put that in the uh, plan, the five-year plan that we will advertise probably next month uh, so that funding can be made available so they can start that program next year and that's what we're that's what we're pushing for with that program. So that being said we hope they have wel the welding program Thank you. Uh, we hope that we have the welding program in place uh, uh, for the next school year in Weewahitchka High School. Uh, the next I wanted to mention we had, uh, as I said, we met with a grant consultant last week and to talk about all these projects. Uh, some of the, a, a lot of this money that you've proposed in this five-year plan goes to the two cities for septic to sewer, for water projects and those type things. So uh, we met with uh, both cities engineers with the grant consultant. I think that they're actually going to have a conference call tomorrow to, to narrow those things down. So the monies to the cities uh, will be appropriated in that five-year work plan. And um, some of it may be phased because some of the projects that both of the cities have is more than you will actually have in the first five years. So uh, we're working on that. I want you to know that both cities are, 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 are working really well in trying to get their projects uh, uh, phased and prioritized. And I know, Mr. Chairman, you had mentioned uh, uh, a sewer rehab project uh, in, in your district, and that's one of the ones that we're focusing on, too, through, through that process. So that was the second, uh, second program in the five-year work plan. Another one was the erosion control. Um, you had actually put some money in this particular pot to go along with pot three funding, too for some erosion control. You know, when we do this project out here at Cape Sandblast, we've been talking about something to try to uh, lessen the erosion rate. And so uh, you've got some money in the erosion control. Uh, Michael, I don't know if he's still here. Yeah, Michael's still here. The uh, grant consultant's working with Michael on exactly what that project looks like. Uh, you've got funding in, in pot one for that. You also have some in pot three if that funding in pot one does not completely cover that project. But that's another project that we're moving forward in the five-year work plan that you've already approved in, in, in going forward. Uh, the last two were acquisitions. Uh, one, of, one of the things that you had that you approved in December was a, what I will call now by, that the grant consultant says we should call it is public safety. And basically it's a uh, uh, public safety office that you will have 911 folks in. You're consolidating. Uh, your sheriff's office, your 911, your dispatch, uh, if I'm missing anything, continue, but uh, you're putting them all in one building. We have found a building downtown uh, and working with the grant consultants instead of using the taxpayers' dollars to purchase that building. Uh, we believe that we can use these pot one funds to do that. Uh, so we have worked out actually some agreements and some contracts. I think they're these must be the ones that they've handed to me. So I'll hand these out to you. Are they? I, I just mm -hmm. about need to pull my glasses up. Well, matter of fact, he's got, he's got one. 
at any rate, I wanted to present that to you for you to look at that. That's uh, the that's the building downtown. Uh, the, uh, the attorney may want to address some of the terms of this uh, agreement with you. But uh, if you have any questions with that, we're actually trying to do this whole project without using uh, property tax dollars. And so we've worked out uh, some details uh, that, that the, it will be owner finance. So we, because you won't have enough money in your pot one to, to totally buy this project to begin with. So we've worked out some owner financing. And Jeremy, if you want to add, add any more details to that that I'm missing for the board. On 418, Cecil Costin. Yes. Uh, uh, commissioners, um, the proposed terms of the agreement uh, there's a 45-day feasibility, so the county can obviously make sure it meets the needs that you all uh, need the facility for and the property. Um, but the proposed purchase terms are $1.1 million that you have in front of you. Um, the county would then be required to put $10,000 in earnest money down on the property. Um, and then following that, there would be a financing aspect over several years at 3.75%. That would be a seller-owner finance, so the owner would hold the first money mortgage on the property and the county would then pay down the remaining balance of that over three years with uh, them carrying that note on the property so that the county can then secure the additional future year funds to pay off that balance of the facility. Um, the first year, and I don't have in front of me, you each have a copy of it, but I believe it's 500000 um, at closing, which I believe is proposed to be June 1st after the grant process goes through. And Mr. Yeager and administrative staff can go through with Langton and Associates and make sure they go through the proper uh, Treasury requirements, grant applications, and after they have that vetted, that they would then purchase the property and be required to put the first 500000 down on that facility. Any other questions I can answer on it? Thank you, Mr. Novak. Any any questions for uh, the attorney, uh, Mr. Yeager, and the board members? Uh, um, and, th and there again, we're trying to do the best that we possibly can do. I know that the sheriff has been very patient over the years uh, with uh, uh, the sheriff's office, and so this was an opportunity to actually get this thing done without trying to borrow the money and, and put the burden on the taxpayer. We can do it with we can do it with uh, BP grant funds. Warren, that's also to move the 911 into that building, also, and, and the dispatch. <laughs> okay. So all of it. Now, we'll have to, uh, the monies that, that we'll be able to spend on this will be for acquisition with, uh, with uh, BP funds. There probably will be some, some monies that we have to come up with to do some uh, uh, wiring. The, we've, we've looked at the building. We've walked through the building. It's in very good shape. So we don't think there will be any type of uh, updates there, but there will probably be some wiring and some different things to, to do that we'll have to come up with a few dollars to do that. So we'll, we'll come back with you with, with a report on what it'll take. And so I think probably what we need is a motion on this to move forward with this particular contract. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Yeager had secured your uh, authorization and, and direction prior to the holidays to move forward to acquire the property. What we need today is really an authorizing vote of the board to ratify the contract, move forward with the feasibility period for the month and a half. I uh, authorize Mr. Butler to sign and uh, also Ms. Norris to issue the earnest money deposit to be held against the property while we move towards closing. Thank you, Mr. Novak. I entertain a motion to uh, move forward with this purchase. So move. A motion by Commissioner Rogers. Second. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any further uh, board discussion on this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> Sheriff, you and I have been working on this project for quite a while along with other board members and members here. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no way we could go out and purchase a piece of ground, prep it, and build a building to house the sheriff and all of his staff. There's no way we're getting this for a dime on a dollar, and we're just foolish not to move forward with this it's a good bit it has everything he needs it has comfort room it has uh, and for all of it it's the old bank building i don't know that used to there was a we were all yeah. bank the saint joe bank and now then there's banks and yeah. banks but anyway yeah. it's located right downtown here pretty ideal it has all the security everything is there 
parking lot. I don't know what it costs just to do that parking lot right. if we came from the ground up. So I'm all for this, and I know the sheriff's been very patient. He's been very cramped. He has people scattered in different areas, and it'll put it all under one roof, and it'll be a great asset not only for this community but for the entire county. Right. I just wanted to yes, sir, thank you. comment. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. not to take advantage of this. Any uh, other board discussion on it? Anyone in the public on this? One in the public? Anyone? Any opposition to the motion? Motion passes 5 and 0. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The only other thing uh, was another acquisition project that y'all had uh, approved in December for us to go out and see what we could do with it. It's also another project that will be purchased through the uh, pot one, and it's in your pot one. Uh, plan that you will advertise and, and it's the lower landing uh, in in the Howard's Creek area and I'll let me give these to you uh, this is another one that you will not have enough money in pot one to do this in one year so uh, when y'all gave us uh, the staff uh, permission to go ahead and proceed with seeing what we could do with this particular parcel this is going to be uh, this is going to be another one that's funded through a, a multi-year task uh, to make sure that we don't expend uh, property tax dollars on this that this all comes out of uh, out of your pot one funds also so this is a multi-year and I think it's two or three years uh, Mr. Attorney, you an additional two years, sir. Yeah. Okay. And so, that's uh, uh, that's the contract on that particular one, and I think we'll need the same motion to proceed with that. Um, all of this pending that that you can use your pot one funds on the on this on this project. Okay. All right. Um, let me say this before we uh, we uh, entertain a motion uh, on the on the lower landing. Um, I'm I'm going to when we enter, when we get the motion I'm going to abstain from this um, from the motion. Um, I reviewed it and discussed it well with the attorney and uh, I feel I have a conflict of uh, with the parties involved. So when the vote come up, I, I will abstain. But I'm I'm going to ask that uh, uh, if we if we don't if we can, let's uh, let's get a second of appraise on it also before we move forward. I mean while we're moving forward, let's get a second appraise just to be. A, Make sure we cover ourselves also. Okay. So I entertain a motion to uh, move forward. I'll make a motion. Uh, and you want to put that about the appraisal? Yes, the, sir. Okay. I'm fine with that. They want to get a second appraisal. So motion by Commissioner McCrone. And I'll second him. Second by Mr. Rich. Any, uh, any opposition to the motion? And I'm going to abstain from this motion. Any uh, further further board discussion? Anyone in the public? Anyone in the public on on this issue? Lower landing. No opposition to the motion. Motion passes four and zero with one. Okay, and I will proceed with. Uh, we didn't have but one commercial appraiser when we did this appraisal of this particular property, so I'll, I'll proceed with finding a, a, a another commercial appraiser yes, to, do, to do the second appraisal thank you sir okay uh, mr. mr chairman if i can can i ask a question um my understand the motion is to proceed the clerk to issue the earnest money authorize mr butler to sign and for me to include a condition in the contract yes, that is subject to a second appraisal yes, within that say month and a half window of initial review yes sir okay thank you still have the floor mr Yeager. Um, Chairman, if I could, while, while Mr. Yeager is still up, yes, we, we uh, for, the, for the board to be able to present everything we've been doing, feels like we've been around the circus for the last year, uh, working on some of these things. Some of them have confidentiality agreements. Uh, most of them do. We have not been able to adequately uh, inform the public of all the good things that are on the horizon. We would like to have uh, as soon as possible, but certainly before maybe a workshop or a special meeting before the next county commission meeting, to lay out uh, the groundwork, we should have the final framework for our agreement with St. Joe and, and, and Eastern on, the, on that first JPA agreement. 
and give timelines for when jobs will start showing up. And, uh, and there's some, certainly some exciting things on the horizon for, for good jobs and good number of jobs. So uh, between uh, Mr. Yeager and, and our grant consultant and, and the attorney, to lay out the, the timeline of if this happens, this is what's going to happen going forward. So we would like to do that uh, hopefully before your next regular meeting, and we'll, we'll be asking you to call that yes, sir. when we get a firm date. Yes, sir. We got, we got one more on the SIG. Uh, what about the uh, we need we got to uh, move forward with the welding program we didn't get a, we, we actually a, you actually had already approved that okay. welding program that okay. so where we're at right now is uh, once we advertise this MYP that welding programs in there we'll immediately start the grant process for that particular program and, and these other two that you, you you've proceeded with so even before you get your plan approved, our, our consultant will start working, and we will start working towards getting those grants uh, applied for so we can get the funding for that as okay. soon as the plan's approved. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Are we down to number 11? Chair, Mr. Chairman, I can take that. Um, I'm working with Bruce May at Holland and Knight, the attorney for the utilities, Lighthouse Utilities. Um, they have requested uh, some additional time to assemble more information to provide to the commission, so they ask that they table the matter till the next month um, or until further notice. Um, but I've been in discussion with Mr. May um, and the representatives, and we'll come back at a later date when they request to be on the agenda again. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Motion to table item 11, public hearing on Lighthouse Utilities. Second. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner McCrone. I mean, I'm sorry, Commissioner McDaniel. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion? The one in the public. Motion passes five and zero. Oh. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Know, there's one other thing that I just saw that I missed real quick. Yes, sir. As y'all know, the uh, pot three, uh, the consortium pot. I've served on that uh, consortium for uh, since 2012, since it was initiated. I've been the vice chair for the last three years. Uh, we have, we're having to run again next, next month through, it's, it's a consortium of the 23 counties. They've asked me to serve again as vice chair and run again as vice chair. I need to get your approval. So if the board will just give me approval to run for that vice chair of the consortium. I forgot about that. Motion to uh, allow Mr. Uh, no move. to move forward. Okay. Got a motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the public? Any opposition? Motion passes five and zero. Oh. All right. All right. We're moving on down to number twelve, bid review and award. And we turn that over to Mr. Butler. Mr. Chairman, I have I have those. I want to okay. give you a handout. Okay. Mr. Chairman, the handout I gave you will cover two of those three items on number 12. Okay. And if I take the first one on the list, food supplies and commodity providers, it's not on the handout I gave you, so we can talk about it. Uh, we received two proposals, one from Durham and Figure Wiggly and one from Richie's IGA, pursuant to the request the board made for proposals. Uh, reviewed those, both are qualified, qualified providers recommendation that the board allow us to continue we we've been purchasing both of these firms for the last 40 and 60 years but for us to continue to purchase from those okay um we'll have to wait a minute yeah we're gonna have to wait because we're we gonna need uh three of us can vote yeah so we got that we got a couple of guys that got to abstain so <laughs> Mr. Chairman, as I understand it, we have two abstentions from the particular issue. You have established a quorum, so if they abstain and you move forward and carry a motion, you have a majority of the quorum to pass that action. All right, you have the okay. Mr. McDaniel back. Sorry about that, John. 
I can you. drag it. We need a motion. Yes, sir. We need a motion. So move. All right, so we got a motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Mac McDaniel. Uh, any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public? All right. Any opposition to the motion? I'm going to have to abstain. Okay. Abstain. Mr. Chairman, if I can, just it's it's a standard procedure. You guys have uh, commissioners have abstentions from time to time under Florida statute and Form Nine. The commissioners are required to state the abstention and the nature of the conflict. As I understand it, both the commissioners have familial ties to the uh, established businesses that submitted under the RFQ. They will fill out the Florida Form Nine, and if that's correct, commissioners, if you can just affirm that that is the conflict, um, and then the commission can move forward with the carrying, if consideration of the motion. Do we have to fill out again, Mr. Attorney? Yes, yes sir. Yes. All right, Mr. Rogers, go ahead on your state your conflict. Yeah. Marital status. All right, Mr. Rich. Family owned business. Good. All right, so we had a had a motion by Commissioner McCrone, second by Commissioner McDaniel with two abstentions. Motion passes three and zero. All right, Mr. Butler. Mr. Chairman, the hand. I think on that one. <clears throat> Mr. Attorney, do we need to go ahead and handle another one, or do you want to talk about the AC? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, while we're on the form, Florida form, uh, there's two issues. Um, as you recall, in the past, uh, we have volunteers that serve on your advisory boards for the county. Um, in the last couple of months, we've asked for you to give us approval on various local businesses that serve on your EDC, your TDC, um, your PDRB but they also have businesses in the community that the county does business with. Florida statute requires them to fill out a Florida Form A for you all to consider their request to continue to provide business services to the county. Um, we've gone from appraisal services to Mr. Ramsey's printing business to Ms. Patty Fisher. Uh, I just go down the line. Most of your advisory board members own businesses in Gulf County, and they want to continue to volunteer for the county, but we need to have you take that formal step to approve them to do that. We have another one. Uh, the mayor, Mr. Uh, Bo Patterson, Bo Knows Pest Control, provides some uh, spray services for the county. But we'd request first uh, issue is that you approve him to continue to provide those services. He'll f fill out the Florida Form A, and he'll be able to continue to volunteer his services to the county. But I'd ask the chairman to entertain any public comment and then authorize a vote for him to continue to serve and also provide those services. All right. Any uh, public comment on allowing Mr. Bo Knows to continue work for County, any public comment? All right, if no public comment, I entertain a motion. So move. Motion Second. by motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second by Mr. Commissioner Rich. Any further board discussion? Anyone from the public? Any opposition to the motion? Motion passes five and zero. Oh. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate that. The second item, as I stated in the previous meetings, we're taking care of each of these. The commission, uh, as a body, voted to move forward on the commodities and groceries issue to address the statutory issue we have with conflicts. Um, those commissioners have abstained from the votes. We've gone through the standard process called for by the statute to advertise qualifications to provide a particular service, um, and they abstained. Along those lines, I, I know each of you commissioners are proud business owners or work for proud businesses in Gulf County, and we have another issue that's come up. Um, we rotate in the county and servicing heating and cooling systems throughout the county and our commissioner McCrone obviously works in that uh, field as well I'd ask for the commission um, for direction if we were to also advertise that and for permission for the staff to advertise a request for qualifications so we could qualify certain vendors in the county or outside the county that wish to provide heating and cooling services and HVAC maintenance in the future. I know uh, Commissioner McCrone, prior to being on this board, did that, as do other commissioners provide services. The way to go through it with the statute is for the commissioner, obviously, to abstain and the commission to give us direction to go out and advertise. And then we will come back with Mr. Butler's recommendations and Mr. Hammond's as to qualified vendors who can provide those services. And then they would go on a rotation schedule uh, through the county administrative staff. And I'd answer any questions on, along those regards. All right, any questions for uh, Mr. Novak in reference to this issue? So we need a motion to... Uh, Turn this thing on. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm not sure if I need to mention 
at, at this point for disclosure? Uh, no, ma'am, because okay. you're not part of the elected body that will make the action, so you don't. But when if there is a submission in the future, that, that can be placed that on that okay. paperwork. Thank, thank you. you. Thank and, you for and, and I can ex explain if we want to do it real quick. We had a we had a freezer go out at the jail two weeks ago. It would, had four or five thousand dollars worth of stuff in it. We they, the staff immediately called. Uh, Mr. McCrone's business who told them they had a conflict. They next called someone else who works for the county who has a conflict. So we had a, we had a crisis, so we had to sign an emergency declaration that, that we, you know, had to have it. But we, we need to be able to do business with local vendors, and we need to go through the proper procedures to do that. So that's that's what we want to do for all the local vendors that, that would potentially have a conflict. Okay. And I suggest we have two or three because that's exactly right. someone might be tied up and you have a backup mm -hmm. that's exactly a right. contingency plan there. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we do. We need a motion to move that forward. Can I get a motion? Entertain a motion. So move. Motion by Commissioner Rogers. Second, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I abstain. Second by Commissioner Mc McDaniel. Yes. Any uh, further board discussion? Anyone in the public on this? All right. Any opposition to the motion? Motion passes four and over one abstention. All right, Mr. Butler, you have the floor. Mr. Chairman, it's, it's on the agenda, but just for the record, that was <clears throat> to do with the food supplies and commodity providers. That was bid number 1718-07. <clears throat> That's one I want to put in front of you is it's on the handout. It is 1718-08. Uh, Consulting and Engineering ins Inspection Services and uh, 09, 1718-09, Flirt and Dry Dock Design and Engineering Services. First one being 1718-08, Consulting and Engineering Inspection Oversight Services. I'm recommending that you award this to the highest ranked bidder and what we did, the committee took and ranked the two bidders, one and two, and some were better in some areas than others, but um, one and two. The number one uh, for consultant and engineering inspection oversight services is Dewberry. Number two is Technology Associates, Inc. That's on 1718-08. Recommendation is that you award that to them. And this is for the, the dry dock project at the old mill site. So I got a re recommendation by uh, Mr. Butler for the consulting and engineering inspection oversight services that we go with the highest bidder, uh, well, not the highest bidder, but the number one rank, um, uh, number one rank corporation that is Dewberry. Can I get a motion on? Motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, got a motion by Commissioner McDaniel. Second, sir. Second by Mr. Rich. Uh, any further board discussion? If I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. What's the difference between the two engineering? Uh, the on that on inspection services. Right. What the first one? Yeah, Dewberry. Dewberry. They proposed like TAI did, and they. They had they had certain things they had to present to us. I, I believe about a dozen different things they had to submit. Okay. And I, based on their submittal, is they both were, both of these to do with the float and dry dock. I guess. Uh, yeah. Both of these. The first one we're talking about is going to be the inspection services, and the second one is going to be the actual engineering of the float and dry dock. The design. Design. Okay. 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 So the first one would be actually the inspection of the design. Okay, that's fine. It'd be okay. a different engineer. Okay. Any more bo uh, board discussion? Anyone in the public on uh, consulting and engineer inspection oversight services? Any opposition to the motion? Motion passes 5 and 0. Mr. Chairman, next one is 1718-09, Floating Dry Dock Design and Engineering Service. We received two proposals. Two, we had particular criteria to go through to, to determine which one was the best. The um, the number one ranked proposal was Heger H E G E R Dry Dock Inc. And the number two was T A I Technology Associates Inc. 
The recommendation is for the board to award to Hager, Dry Dock Inc. for the engineering and design of the floating dry dock for the Eastern Marine Project. Okay. We got a recommendation by Mr. Butler that we go with number one, Hager, Dry Dock Inc., uh, the consulting, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, floating dry dock design and engineering services. We get a motion. So move. Second. We had a motion by Commissioner McCrone, second by Mr. Commissioner Rogers. Uh, any further board discussion on, on this issue? Anyone in the public on floating dry dock design and engineering services? No one in the public. Any opposition? Motion passes 5 and 0. Oh. Mr. Chairman, on each of those two, what we need to do, we'll, we'll get with both number one ranked firms. <clears throat> sit down, we negotiate with them, and make sure we're in the money. Yes, and in the event that we cannot come to an agreement on the amount of money, we'll come back to you yes, sir. and ask you to go to number two. Yes, sir. But um, we, we'll make an attempt on number one on each one of those two items. If we can't get there, we'll come back to you. Thank you, Mr. Butler. All right. I mean, we're going to take a look, a change right here. Uh, Can I say one more thing? Okay. On yes, sir. Mr. Hamm? Uh, uh, we just need to recognize, the board needs to recognize, we're going to pay for any of these fees that are paid, or design fees and inspection fees, out of that DOT JPA that, that we signed in, in December. Okay. So that those funds will be paid for out of that JPA. Just need to have that statement. Okay. So it's coming out of JGPA. Okay. Good. Good. All right. At this time, I'm going to recognize... Uh, Mr. Joe, is that Rosier? Am I right? Close. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> ARPC staff. Give your name, state your name, and, and who you represent for the for the record, please. Good morning. I'm, I'm Joe Crozier. Crozier. I work for the okay. Appalachian Regional Planning Council. Okay. Uh, Commissioner McDaniel's on our board, and so is this young man who let me speak this morning on a little late notice. We're uh, hosting a conference at, at the Florida State University Stadium in March on the 14th, 15th, and 16th. We reserved 20 spots for any of the Riparian County uh, Commission, whether it's someone on the commission or someone that they designate. So this conference is for the Apalachicola River and Bay. So we've invited, and we have people speaking from the core, from uh, the Water Management District, DEP, NOAA, a lot of different agencies, uh, federal, around the country, and, and locally. But on the third day is when we think it would be most helpful if anyone would like to come. We're going to be talking about a lot of the economics and uh, legal updates, transboundary coordination, uh, drought management, all that kind of stuff. So if anyone wants to come, uh, just, just let me know later on. You, you have plenty of time. But and I'm the coordinator for the Riparian County Stakeholder Coalition too. So, so you guys give you five thousand dollars every year for us to to work with the uh, Apalachicola Chattahoochee Flint stakeholders. Uh, we're, we're, one of our bigger projects right now is, other than this conference, is a drought management program with uh, with NOAA and how to equally allocate water. Um, and some of our members were subpoenaed uh, this month actually to to talk about what's going on in Atlanta. Um, so if anyone has any questions about the conference or <coughs> any of those legal updates, I can answer them now if, if anyone has a, any interest. Any, any questions for us? Oh. Joe, you said that'll be at uh, Campbell Stadium, yep. Bobby Bowden Field. Mm -hmm. Not on the field. We'll actually be <laughs> in, on the field. We'll be, yeah, we'll be inside. We'll be outside. <laughs> uh, but, and also on Friday afternoon, the Riverkeeper will be doing a, a boat trip if anyone wants to go on that. Um, and you'll have an opportunity to speak with, with the Corps, the Water Management District, whoever, whoever you want. Um, so, yeah, just, just let me or uh, Ward, if you could channel that to me. Sure. Okay, thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. <coughs> All right. I think we're down to number 13. <coughs> we all hit your courthouse. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I know we have a, a lot on your agenda, and we're trying to address them all. I just wanted to, if I can, before we uh, address the Weewa Courthouse, is to go back to number 12. Um, we had the um, 
food supplies and commodities providers RFQ and recommendation. Um, and you heard Mr. Hammond speak about you know putting out the fires as they come out. Um, since your last meeting on December 12th, obviously over the holidays, there's a requirement or to feed uh, both your inmates um, and address various county uh, commodities issues. So I'd ask the commission to authorize Ms. Herring and Ms. Norris to approve invoices that were received from any commodity providers that might be conflicted by our current commission. And I'd ask the commission to commissioners that it applies to to abstain from that vote. Um, but we need approval to move forward and pay those invoices, uh, whether it be a holiday invoice or the sale purchases uh, from December 12th to today, uh, January 23rd. Yes, sir. So can I get a motion to move forward to go ahead on and pay those those invoices? So move. Motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner uh, McDaniel. Any further board discussion? No one in the public on this issue? Any opposition to the motion? We got two abstentions. Yes. Stated, yes. Stated for the record. Family business. I'll abstain. Family contact. Motion passes 3 and 0 with two abstentions. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. I, I hope that's the last time I have to ask you about that, and I appreciate your cooperation. Um, Mr. Chairman, the next item that you had addressed is number 13. In working with Commissioner Rich and Commissioner McDaniel, um, they had received correspondence prior to the holiday uh, with regards to North Florida child development and their ongoing occupancy of the Weewa Courthouse going back to 2000. Um, I know that uh, over the years, um, Ms. Gaskin has come before you all. They've done, uh, they employ, I think, about 15 employees and um, have done significant improvements to the courthouse in Weewa Hitchka. Um, the correspondence that the commission received and has discussed individually with some of the commissioners is their uh, request now to take a, an additional step and some of the things are incre increased square footage to include the second floor um, meeting uh, several ADA requirements and working on the elevator access uh, creating some fence storage areas um, behind the building adjacent to North 3rd Street um, also uh, an ability to grant permission and access to visitors for the historical courtroom on the second floor that the county had um, renovated many years ago um, and in those discussions and dialogue, and I've, I've discussed with Ms. Gaskin and, and um, Mr. Thompson, who are here today, is that they had requested several years ago that the county consider possible conveyance of that courthouse to enable them to secure additional grant funds. Um, I just, reporting to this commission, previous commissioners and commission bodies had uh, discussed with the city of Weewa Hitchcock if they were en entertain uh, consideration of conveying that property over to them. They had indicated in the past that that was not something that they were open to. Um, we've received this correspondence from Ms. Gaskin. I know she's here. She wants to obviously come up and answer any questions. But the request today is that there be a new consideration for the conveyance of that historical courthouse to North Florida Child Development. Um, some of the terms that have been discussed, I believe, with Commissioner McDaniel individually, uh, Commissioner Rich that I've had the discussions with, also with Ms. Gaskin, is that there be several conditions that if the property was ever not used by North Florida Child Development or conveyed out in the future, that it would revert back to the county, first and foremost. Um, two additional uh, conditions of a possible land donation agreement would be that there would always be continuous uh, employment. I know Ms. Gaskin is very proud of the jobs that they have in Weewahitchka, and one of the conditions with the county would be that there would be a requirement to maintain those jobs and then employment in the courthouse, and ideally with the improvements that they would expand and obviously hire more folks once they increase the square footage. Um, and then the third uh, condition that we've discussed up to this point to report to the commission and the public is that the county would continue to have access to that courthouse, that historic courthouse on the second floor. I believe it's 100 years of history in Gulf County, and I know there's a lot of folks that are proud of that courtroom. Um, and back in the day when we had our mock trial program, I used to participate with our judge and would have some of the high school children go up there and use it for the mock trial programs. So the county would request and require that that condition that they could use that courtroom going forward in the future. So those are the three conditions that we had discussed to, the, to date. I don't know if the commissioners or the chairman have any questions. I'd be happy to answer what I know. And I know Ms. Uh, Gaskin is here as well to hopefully uh, fill in any of the blanks. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Ms. Uh, Ms. Gaskin, you want to? Come on up. Sharon Gaskin, 236, Old Panama Highway. 
and I'm the CEO of North Florida Child Development. I have 100 employees, not just in Gulf County, but 50% of my operations is in Gulf County. So. It's in the north and the south. It is, yes, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Gask. Is there anything? Any, any, got any questions for Ms. Gask? I want to say it was in 11 or 12 that we, we discussed some options. I, I think the consideration for closing it was what really prompted me to come forward. And um, I, I'm really excited about going after additional money to, to do the historical complete reservation, uh, preservation of the second or the bottom floor, uh, the one that was abandoned that Roy Lee was in. Um, so I'm, I have barriers, and that's uh, the size of the space that we're in, we need more. But more than that, um, to be the gatekeeper or the custodial and take care of that um, historical piece of information um, about the Weewa Hitchka area is, uh, would be a privilege. So we're offering that opportunity um, to, the, to the county. We would like to take that on. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Gask. Uh, any, any, any further questions? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, may I? Mr. McDaniel. Chair, and thank you. You're welcome. So much. And uh, for those who do not know, Ms. Gaskin here is a fighter. <laughs> she puts her mind to something. You better get out of the way because <laughs> if she's going out of the way. She's That's going. Okay. But on it, there's a, ladies and gentlemen, on the more serious side. There's a lot of old history, our county history, there back in the Calhoun County days. And we've had some very, uh, uh, there's been some high profile trials. I'm talking more or less than the court. Now, my family, both sides, occupied that courthouse anywhere from the sheriff to the judge to the uh, what, tax collector, and you name it, at one time or the other. Both sides of my family. A lot of history, and I would like to say this, uh, Mrs. Gaskin's father-in-law, <coughs> late Mr. David C. Gaskin, he argued some very high-profile cases in that courtroom, along with attorneys right here in Port St. Joe, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, oh my goodness, my, Mr. Whitten. Carston is one of them, and uh, Fred Whitten, uh, but even before him, uh, uh, goodness gracious, my mind went blank. I should have, yeah, Judge. Fitzpatrick, here he was a circuit judge, not only an attorney. Years. Uh, Mickey Stone, Mr. Silas Stone from the old Stone family here, who helped found a lot of that into the county. We got a lot of history, and just to tie into there, the Stones. My dad, I didn't find out recently. You always learn that Stone Mill Creek up there was after the Stone family from here. They had an old grist mill up there. They call it the Stone Grist Mill. So you learn something every day. But from here in, in our area. But uh, Sharon, I know you do a wonderful job with this. And uh, my only request, and I don't think I'd be able, if we can, uh, yes, you can utilize it, but we would like to maybe retain that old courtroom. But any of you that haven't been there, it's a beautiful, beautiful old courtroom back in the day. It's uh, it's nothing like we have now, but you can see what hundred plus people or more than that up there, elevated uh, floor and all. But, and if you ever did, hopefully, as it goes on down at uh, Northwest Florida, or what, it may change names or whatever. But if they ever did decide to just, you know, abandon that side, that it would Certainly. fall back to the people. Certainly. Okay. And, and I want That's to, all I have, but I, I, I want it to everything belong to the done. people now because yeah. the second phase of the historical preservation would be to memorialize the leaders of, of the historical in the in the community uh, as you spoke of Judge Fitzpatrick um, and, and many of the um, George Core um, yeah. many of the leaders that and, and make it part of the environment as it's designed so and, it, and and be using it as office space and and open it to the public too uh, if they need that uh, meeting room it's a beautiful area um, the city commission could have their meetings there you could have your meetings there um, possibly um, so uh, for it to be accessible would be 
part of it. All right, that's good. You good? That's good. I'm good. Uh, any, anyone in the public with questions for Miss uh, Miss Gaskin? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Come on up to the podium. Shall I sit down? Yeah, just slide over, Miss Gaskin. Just state your name and your address for the record, please. James Rich, 429 Old Transfer Road. We want Hitchcock. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Rich. <clears throat> There's been talk about a room to be set aside in the old courthouse for a museum. Yeah. I wanted to know whatever came of that. A museum in the old courthouse for a local history. Is that on the platter too or not? That's what I was just discussing. A museum. Yes or no? I don't know. You don't know? I don't either. I've heard there's going to be one now. I've heard not. We don't know. But there are some people that have a lot of things they could donate and be glad to do it if we actually did that. Okay. I just wanted to find out more about that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rich. Any more questions for Ms. Ms. Gask? Board members? Mr. Nova? Uh Chairman, um, like I said, you the, the Chairman McDaniel had received that written inquiry uh, prior to the holiday. I know Commissioner Rich has had a discussion. Um, if there's no other questions of the commission, I think uh, Ms. Gaskin's proposal uh, before you as a consideration of that conveyance if you authorized and directed me I would work on that land donation agreement and a proposed deed of conveyance if that was the will of the board um, And build those conditions into it and I'd work with her and her staff over the next couple of weeks so that we could come back to you with a, a, a Formal proposal that you all could consider at your February date um, And obviously put on the agenda for further discussion and your consideration at that time um, I'd be happy to answer any of the questions you have on that request from Ms. Gaskin any more in the board members or any I'm, I'm I'm fine with I'm, I'm fine with the request um, do we need a motion to yes sir if you if I if there's a motion to direct staff to move and work with North Florida child development on those terms and then we'll come back with something actually on paper for you at your next meeting after Miss Gaskin and her staff and I meet okay. mr. chairman you'd be honored to make that motion all right thank you thank you sir be honored to second it, sir. And so I got a motion by Commissioner McDaniel, second by Commissioner Rich. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the public? Any opposition to the motion? Motion passes 5 and 0. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Aubrey. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, moving on down to number 14, Samantha Willis of Next Edge Networks. Samantha Willis. Mr. Chairman, can yes, I? Yes, sir. Um, as you wait for Ms. Willis, if she's here to come forward, we received, I received correspondence yesterday inquiring if, the, if they were unable to attend today, if you would still consider their proposal. Um, and if she's not here today, I'd like to be able to basically summarize. I've had discussions with each of you over the past few weeks. I know some of the commissioners um, have uh, received information from department heads of the request. Um, Ms. Willis works for Next Edge Networks, which is also, I believe, a subsidiary of Federated Wireless. And anything that I represent to you all is all from the information I've received in correspondence or conversations. In a nutshell, and to summarize what my individual conversations with the department heads and some of the commissioners, is that this company has proposed to uh, utilize your South Gulf Volunteer Fire Department tower to place a transponder on it to assist them in relaying communications from offshore, offshore vessels to help their, uh, I believe it's cellular communications. Um, they've proposed and they've talked with our uh, fire director. They've spoken with some of the administrative staff. Um, I've spoken with Willis. Um, I've actually reviewed the proposed agreement or lease um, and the proposal was $75 a month for them to have access to place their transponder on your tower. Um, we've discussed it with them. Um, I have concerns with regards to the 24-hour access to your volunteer county public property, which is your volunteer fire department. Um, the business side of it is your consideration and decision whether that is something that's uh, feasible and, and, and worth your while. Um, again, my concerns are with regards to the accessibility, the liability with regards to having something on your towers. You guys, uh, Commission, have dealt with this in the past. Um, I received a later communication just this last week, I think on Friday evening, indicating if that was not doable for the county, would you all consider placing a light post up somewhere in District 5 that they could place a transponder on and then structure a lease agreement with? 
So those are the communications that I've received. I've had uh, discussions with them back, um, and I put it before you because they've requested that if they did not attend today, despite being requested to be put on the agenda, that you would consider their request. So I think it goes back, I think it goes back four, four months that we've been working and, and responding to this particular vendor. Um, they've asked to be on your uh, meeting agenda prior. Um, you, they're on here today. And, and if there's anything I can answer for you, I'd be happy to. There's no action required of this commission, but if you wanted to provide me any further direction, I'll be happy to relate to them. Or if they're watching right now, they can you can provide your comments or direction to them as well. So, so from my understanding, it's like some kind of subscription for them. It's actually a lease agreement. It's a license agreement for them to utilize your tower, just as we have out on the county campus here, is for a private third company to come and utilize a space on your tower to place a a transponder, a uh, tech, a piece of technology that will relay signals from offshore vessels. Um, and like I said, if I'm not characterizing or summarizing their proposal, then I would encourage them to come do that in the future. But that is, that is my understanding of the proposal for $75 a month for them to use your county fire tower to place their equipment on it, and then they would pay you per month to relay those signals. If I could, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. McCall. And, Chairman, we would be liable for, you know, yeah. and, and, and I, I'm not forgiving anybody, 20, you know, that's not tied to the fire department, access to that building or, you know. So, so it, it, try to boil it down um, the county gives people permission to do something on county property it's a license agreement whenever we do something of that nature we'll always have a hold harmless and indemnification we'll make sure they have insurance so we protect the county and the county taxpayers as best we can if you give someone permission to be on a property it's an invitation to be there so they actually have a legal right to be there to do what they want on that tower or fix it or adjust it if someone doesn't on county property, obviously, then you have protections under Florida statute in terms of your immunity. But this takes it to a different step. So you would actually go into business or accept this business proposal. You'd receive payment, and they would have a right to go and use that. So in terms of exposure and liability, anytime you enter an agreement with a third party, there's going to be exposure and liability with regards to that. You need to have a safe, and I know that you have your guidelines, and you have your lights, and you have all your insurance in place on these this volunteer fire department, but there's considerations for the commission, the staff, the volunteers who are all out there. You're now introducing another element to that property who has a right to be there. You 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 said seventy five hundred dollars a month, right? No, sir, seven seventy five seven five dollars a month. I thought I, I figured you said seventy five dollars. I don't think that would cover the insurance for us, will it? Jeremy, you're not gonna get that pizza party. Uh, any, any other board discussion on this issue? Mr. Rich, Mr. Rogers? Mr. Chairman, um, Sir, you oh my God. I, the only question I have is for, I guess, public safety, but with what they're trying to offer as a service, but um, I know with the recent updates to the tower out there, cell phone service is a lot better offshore, um, so I don't think it's essential that we do that. So okay. Probably a liability, yes. not an asset to the, the community. Okay. I, I agree with you on that. On that. Any other? M Mr. Chairman, just because yes. you asked the question, I wanted to provide it to the commission. I'm just sitting here reading term three. It's a rental agreement. It says for five years upon the day of commencement, they'll make a one-time payment of $4,500. After that initial five years, the agreement could automatically be extended for three additional five-year terms um, and to terminate at least two months in the notice, and the tenant will pay the landlord as consideration of the extension and annual payment in the amount of $800 for each one of those additional years. So all in all, this looks like a 20-year agreement, a first five-year agreement for 4500 and then automatic three five-year renewals that they'll pay you $800 a year for each of those additional 15 years. That is the proposed lease agreement that they've provided to us. Go ahead, Mr. Hammer. <laughs> The, the reason this has gone on for four months is because staff wouldn't agree to it. I mean, technically, the administrator could have could have agreed to this and brought it to you, but we have a horrible experience over the last 25 years with people that leased space on our tower, never paid. We had to pay to pull their stuff off. It loaded our tower, all those things. So the $75 a month, we have wasted lots of good energy on that, and staff's recommendation is to deny. That's okay. Okay. Just so the commission and chairman also understand, there's nothing keeping from private industry securing private land and installing private towers and putting their transponders on that private property. This has been a request of you as a commission, 
on behalf of the taxpayers to put it on public property. Okay. All right. So, so to, I know you say we don't have to make a move a move on this day, but I mean, we can make a move to deny, right? Yes, sir. You, yes, no, or just not respond. But whatever you direction you provide us will relate to Miss Willis and her company. All right. So, what is what is the board's recommendation? Make a motion, we deny it. Got a motion by Commissioner McDaniel to deny. I'll second that. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any other for, uh, any further board discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yes, you have the chair. You have we leave floor. here. Rich and I, back in the north end of the county, there's sheriff. There's several towers, all on private property, all along. Close to your neighborhood. I didn't even know it was up there until I saw it the other night. I don't do a lot of, out at night. But anyway, they can they can find a piece of property, deal with a property owner there. There's other towers out there. Everywhere. There's towers from right here down this way, every direction. They're on private property. All right. So we got a motion by Commissioner McDane, second by Commissioner uh, McCrone. Uh, anyone in the public on this issue? Any opposition? Motion to uh, deny passes five and zero. Oh. All right, Miss. Moving on down to item number fifteen, Miss Diana Burkett. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. I spoke to Miss uh, Burkett uh, this week, and she has asked to um, be on next month's agenda for this item. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, moving right along. Number 16, Mr. Jonathan Brucker, St. Joseph Bay Aquatic Preserve. Mr. Brucker. Answer. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I came here about six months ago to let you guys know about our uh, seagrass restoration program that's going on in, in St. Joe Bay. Hold on one second, Mr. Jonathan. Yes, State sir. your name and record sure. for the... Uh, uh, Jonathan Brucker, uh, St. Joseph Bay, Thank you, sir. aquatic preserve manager. Uh, we're the ones who are uh, managing the shallow seagrass buoy system in the southern end of the bay. We have kiosks uh, regarding the system at uh, Frank Pate. Uh, the uh, uh, Peninsula State Park and at uh, Presnell's. Just as an update, um, in the last uh, few months, we've replaced 11 of the down buoys that had been down for a while. Uh, we bought uh, new buoys, new poles, and uh, so far they're all still standing straight, which is a bonus. Uh, and uh, to let you guys know that if you see a little plane flying around over the bay, we're starting to do our uh, mapping of the entire seagrass uh, community in the entire bay so all permits and everything have been acquired for that so don't panic it's just a part of the mapping um, and as soon as we get the imagery we'll be working with contractors to restore uh, two acres of uh, prop scars in the bay so i plan on coming back as we get uh, further along in the project show you guys some of the imagery that we're getting uh, we've also just installed a brand new seagrass sign at uh, frank pate it's a scars hurt uh, sign. It's a uh, part of the B Seagrass Safe campaign through Sea Grant and the University of Florida, and it's just to uh, magnify the efforts that we're doing in uh, seagrass protection in the Bay. So, just wanted to give a quick update. I appreciate the time. If you guys have any questions, uh, my contact info is on the back of that brochure. Um, I'm available all the time. So, I appreciate your time today. I don't sure. know if you guys have any questions now, but any questions? You had a great opportunity uh, during the cold weather because it was uh, extremely low tide. Yeah, uh, uh, we were out there. Our guys are flying out there right now. Uh, just the winds make it a little difficult right now to fly those little planes. The plane is, you know, six foot wingspan, but only weighs seven pounds. But it flies at you know, 70 miles an hour, so we're covering 300 acres a day. So uh, we're doing what we can. But uh, it's tough to get around when there's no water. <laughs> so, Any more? Think Oh, I'm sorry. Any more questions? Yeah, I have one, Mr. Yes, sir. Chairman. Yes, sir. Tell me about the turtle population out there. I was talking sure. to one of the, some of the people on around down in that area, and they said St. Joe Bay was 
abundantly least, supplied with turtles. Yep. Um, and they were doing damage to possibly some of the grass. Now, I don't know. No, I mean, that's not, not true. The turtles naturally okay, well, exist I, I, out there. But, but there is an abundance of turtles uh, yes, in St. Joe Bay. Uh, yep. Uh, the uh, southern end of the bay, we do get a lot of turtles, uh, juvenile and adult. Uh, we do encounter them a lot. And just recently, with the cold weather, uh, there was over 300 cold stunned turtles that were uh, uh, you know, found on the shorelines that have been rehabbed in the uh, Gulf world, and they've been uh, re-released. Uh, so we have a very active uh, volunteer community with the state park, with the friends groups around with the state parks, the Buffer Preserve, and us. Uh, so uh, they are out there, and they are okay. abundant. They're just uh, less visible in the wintertime when it's colder. Okay. They are out there. Jonathan, I've always seen a few in the bay. I've been here all my life. But, I, I mean, I'm talking to fishermen now. They're, they're telling me five to 700 at any uh, time, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, on a good day when we're out taking water samples right. and we're in the southern of the bay, I mean, you can see a turtle – you know, poking out of the water. I mean, just as far as yeah, just I mean, all the time you see him just coming up for air and diving down there. Like a herd of cattle, you know. I mean, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But they're out there, so. so we got, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So just in that, you know, three four day period last week, there were three hundred. I know you. You know. I've been in that bay all my life, and used to you might see 10 all day long. You know, yeah. these guys are telling me they're seeing five, 700 turtles a day, you know, just yep. what has changed, you know. Uh, well, I mean, it's a uh, viable uh, a turtle habitat. The seagrass is a place for them to uh, stop over and rest to develop as juveniles, but they also eat the grass. And so the healthier the seagrass, the more we're going to see them down there. And that southern end, there is a very healthy seagrass population. Do they eat the seagrass? Do they eat the roots and all? Or? Uh, they tend to eat it down to the roots. And so would the that, grass would that have an impact? I mean, if you went from, I, I mean, I'm not, no. uh, you know. It's you, a, a natural thing for them to eat the grass. It's kind of like a cow eating grass. They'll eat it down right. to the roots, and then it'll grow. And they'll wipe out a, you know, if you, if you don't move cattle, they'll wipe out a section right. of. You know, well, the uh, turtles, turtles will move with the grass as well. You know, I mean, turtles will move where the grass is. But right. uh, I, I'm just sure. You know, sure. I just I've never seen that many. I've been here all my life, and I've never seen. You know, you'd see ten, maybe twenty turtles in a day, and they're saying five to seven hundred. You know, you know. I well, think, uh, give me a call wow. when it's warmer. We'll take you out with us. I'll we'll be glad you. to. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Right. Once it's warmer, because it's not as much fun in the cold. So. Okay. Right. So. Oh. Any, any more questions? All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Before we uh, move down to Mr. Uh, Mr. Rich here, uh, the chair is going to call.